Fuel Tech. Brought to you by Holly, number one in fuel systems for over 100 years. You know, one area that's really easy to overlook on a project is a fuel system. Because it's not as impressive as a big fancy engine, not as cool as a killer suspension, but it is every bit as important. And it doesn't make sense to spend a lot of time and money on a project just to see it stranded or burning on the side of the road because you overlook the fuel system. Now, fuel system's a lot more than just a carburetor or fuel injection. Oh, it's the regulator, it's the lines, it's the filters, it's all that stuff. And it all needs to be maintained and checked from time to time, whether you drive the vehicle or it sits in the garage. So, starting at the back, we are gonna work our way forward and show you some of the things that you can do so you can upgrade or maintain your fuel system and keep it working properly. Okay, the gas tank is first. And remember, if your vehicle hasn't run in a few years, you really need to take the tank out and have it boiled out and get rid of all the sludge and the varnish inside of it. Just sticking a bunch of new gas in there and going on a road trip is not going to solve the problem. Matter of fact, it's going to make it worse because you don't want all that junk going through your fuel system. Also, tanks can look good on the outside, but be rusting from the inside out. <laughs> That's awful. And that will continue to clog fuel lines and ruin fuel pumps and filters. I never see one at that. And with so many quality replacement or custom tanks on the market, there is no reason to mess around with an old tank once it starts to rust inside. The rubber fuel lines are next. And as we've said before, these deteriorate over time. So it's a good idea to replace them every couple of years whether they look good or not. Now, of course, braided stainless steel hose will obviously last much longer, but they should also be checked periodically for leaks, especially if you're using ethanol-based fuels that can eat rubber. The hard fuel lines, just like the gas tank, can rust on the inside as well as the outside. And you can pretty much bet that if your gas tank was full of rust and crud, your hard lines probably are too. Fortunately, all you have to do is go down to your auto parts store, pick up some replacement line, use the original piece as a pattern, bend you up a new line. Now, when you go to mount the lines, make sure that you use some sort of clamping system like this to hold them in place. As you can see, Earl's Performance Plumbing has a couple of different choices that are far superior to this old clamping system. And although it may be tempting, a rubber fuel line should never be wire tied to electrical wires for <laughs> for obvious reasons. Now, most people realize that you need to clean or replace your fuel filter from time to time, whether you're using the cheap disposable style filter or the more expensive reusable style filter. But you should also not rely on just one filter to keep everything clean. A pre-filter before the fuel pump and a secondary filter after the fuel pump is the best way to keep the trash out of your carburetor or injectors. Another place you can get corrosion is in the carburetor itself. There you go. <laughs> get a spider in there especially if the engine sits for long periods of time without running. The fuel turns to varnish, the rubber deteriorates, and the metal corrodes, and any of these will give you a crappy running engine. The only solution is to either rebuild the car or replace it. Also, using a fuel stabilizer when you store the vehicle will go a long way to help prevent this from happening. Now, obviously, safety is extremely important when you're messing with a fuel system because it's the vapors that ignite and burn. And most people know the basics of having plenty of ventilation in their shop and not smoking or causing sparks. But when they're out on the road, most people are not prepared for a fuel system fire. And that's where carrying a small fire extinguisher in the vehicle can make all the difference. The cool thing is, once you've gone through the fuel system, you don't have to mess with it anymore, which means you can turn your attention to other things, like trying to figure out how to drive your new project.
One of the best engine designs to come down the road in a long time is the Chevy LS series engine. I mean, it offered incredible performance potential in a small modern package. The problem with that small modern package, though, it didn't look very cool. It had the coil packs on it and plastic intakes, engine covers, all that kind of stuff. Well, Holly decided to do something about that, came out with a whole line of parts to make your LS go faster and look better. Check this out. First up, they've got engine mount brackets so you can put an LS engine in your project. Then they've got aluminum oil pans. They've got a low profile dual quad system if you want to run carburetors on an LS. They've got all kinds of headers. They've got a tunnel ram system that'll fit carburetors or fuel injection. And if you want to hide those coil packs, they've got these coil pack covers that you paint up. They'll slide right over the coil packs and it'll make your engine look like a big block Chevy. If you are planning a project with an LS engine, or if you're in the middle of one and you want to give it that old school look and performance, Holly is where you need to go. You know, one of the greatest inventions to come down the road in a long time was fuel injection. The problem is early fuel injection units were finicky and hard to tune. So a lot of guys were nervous about swapping their trusty carburetor for a finicky fuel injection unit. Fortunately, fuel injection has come a long ways over the years. But even with the modern fuel injection unit, there's a lot of rumors that persist about tunability and drivability. Well, Holly decided to do something about that. And they came out with a multi-port fuel injection unit that they say is as reliable as their carburetor and almost as easy to install. So we're gonna take a look at it. Now, Holly is calling this system the Avenger EFI, and here's what it consists of. You have a high-flowing aluminum intake manifold, fuel rails, fuel injectors, an aluminum throttle body, and an electric fuel pump. Then you've got the computer and a handheld controller to tune that. You've got filters, you've got all kinds of sensors, and you have a big pile of wiring harnesses. Now, I know some of you guys are looking at this going, what is this? I thought you said this was supposed to be easy. Well, it is easy. Most of it just bolts on and plugs up. This is what does all the hard work. The first step is to take off the carb and the manifold. Now, when you go to bolt on your new intake manifold, this is not the time to cheap out on hardware or gaskets. So for gaskets, we're using these ultra seals from Mr. Gasket. And for hardware, we're stepping up to these ARP stainless steel intake manifold bolts and we're going to retire this cheap Home Depot stuff. Now just slide in the injectors, followed by the fuel rails, put on the throttle body, and finally plug in your harness. Since we're converting to an electric fuel pump, we're gonna pull off this mechanical pump and block the hole with this plate that comes with the kit. And that is really all there is to installing this unit. Now, you will need to upgrade to a smaller HEI distributor because a big one like this is not gonna fit. At this point, it's just a matter of plugging in the wiring harness to the sensors and the computer, running the fuel system, and then mounting the computer somewhere on the vehicle. Now, the cool thing about this is that there's no laptop required to tune it. That's what this little guy is for. You just make your choices, the computer self-learns, tunes the fuel injection unit, making this one of the easiest, simplest EFI upgrades for a muscle car or a 